We are a nonprofit organization. We borrow money from banks and foundations and others and relend that money to entrepreneurs. And as a nonprofit, I mean, the reason that we exist is because we want to help low income people and women of color, people of color, uh, and women. Um, otherwise, if, if we didn't have a special target market, um, we would just be a finance company or, or a regular bank. Um, our mission is to help people grow businesses so that they can be successful and take care of their families and give back to their communities, uh, and, as well as use their talents and skills. Uh, which all of us sort of intrinsically want to do. We started actually in the back of my house in North Georgia. Um, I married a man from the Southern Appalachian Range. So I'm mm. speaking to you right now from Cleveland, Georgia, because my office is now eight miles from the house. But when we first started 14 years ago, I just started in the back of the house. Uh, we had a federal grant for $50,000 and we wanted to help primarily low-income Appalachian women in four counties. And over time, people in other counties heard about our programs, and so they just kept asking us to expand, and we did. And now we have uh, we, we serve 68 counties, which is an awful lot. Um, and we serve metropolitan Atlanta. What you've got in front of you is uh, a slide about who we are, and I'm not going to go through all of that, but I did want to point out a couple of things under what is ACE's track record. First of all, you see that $22 million in the first bullet? That's what we've done since we started 14 years ago with $50,000. And we never imagined that we would ever, or I never imagined that it, would, that it would ever grow as large as it's grown. And of that 22 million, 11 million of that has been to what's called uh, microclients, or that's been microfinance. You know, when you think about microfinance in the United States, it's quite a bit different than international microfinance that you're, you're reading about in uh, half the sky. You just can't do that much with $25 in this country. I mean, part of it has to do with um, a more sophisticated financial system and such as like credit cards and I mean lots of different ways to, um, to, to get capital. I mean, some of it, of course, you is very, very expensive capital. Uh, some of it is predatory capital. Um, the other thing is our country has a lot more regulations. So you read about someone, say, in Bangladesh, I mean, uh, Dr. Yunus's famous Grameen programs, who maybe gets our equivalent of $25 to buy some chickens and then sell the eggs on the side of the road or make fried pies or something like that. Uh, well, here, the U.S. Department of Agriculture would shut you down. I mean, you can't do that here. So, you know, there's, it's much more complex here. The other thing that's very different is in domestic microenterprise, this is what we call those of us in the United States, the definition of microenterprise or microfinance specifically are loans of $50,000 or less. $50,000. Yeah, that, that's quite a bit. It used to just be $35,000, and then the definition changed uh, because of the recession. I think there was a move to, to get more people into that definition of microfinance. Um, the other thing on this sheet that I wanted to point out to you is down third from the bottom. It says um, ACE is one of the top 10 USA microfinance organizations in the country, and we were named that by CNN Money in uh, 2010. 
which we're very, very proud of. Um, interestingly enough, I mean, even, even you all wanting to do this uh, webinar with us, is that we were advocating for microfinance for, oh gosh, these, those 10 years. And we just couldn't get the traction for the philanthropic support or the economic development support in Georgia. And so we decided, you know what, let's not call ourselves microfinance anymore. Let's call ourselves just small business loans. So as fate would have it, um, if you look at our website, you do not see uh, the term microfinance. We do not use the term microenterprise, even though we're making a lot of microenterprise loans. Uh, we use the term small business. So of, of that $22 million figure, by the way, half of that is in microloans, $11 million. When we think about women, uh, you know, in metropolitan Atlanta, Half the population, just half of it, are women. And this seems to be a great time for women's small businesses, um, whether they're micro or larger businesses. And American Express does an annual report on the state of women's businesses. And Georgia has been ranked number one for the growth of the number of women-owned businesses. Uh, also, Atlanta is the number one city for the growth in the number of women-owned businesses. But, as you can see from this slide, we're 21 in revenue and 13 in the number of employees. So that causes us to think, well, does that mean there are a whole lot of sole proprietorships out there that are owned by women? and they don't make much money, and they don't hire a lot of people. And we think that is, that is what that, that stat means. Now, that's sort of the negative view of it. The positive view for our particular program is that means there's a whole lot of room for building capacity of women-owned businesses. And we started looking at this last year very intensely because it, cause as you already know, I told you our program was started by me as a woman and then we also have always had many more women staff than men and our board is predominantly women. So it made sense to us to let's take this time and very intensively begin to look at how we can help women. Now this does not mean that we're excluding men. But it does mean that we are going to, or have, started tailor-making a program that's just for women entrepreneurs. And we call that WISE. Um, the WISE program is, it provides capital, but it also provides a tailored program, tailored to women program. I mean, we've always done business advisory services classes, business networks, that kind of thing for our regular borrowers. I mean, that is one of the things that has distinguished us in the marketplace is if you get a loan from ACE, you also uh, get the accompanying mm -hmm. business support services. But, but right now, we decided to, to do something that's very specifically tailored to women. The, the data is showing us, and I don't mean our data, I'm talking about national data, that women do not borrow money early enough in the cycle of their business. And part of that is because women don't have the wealth, historically don't have the wealth, to leverage the debt. Um, or another way to put it would be they don't have the wealth to put up as a collateral to, to borrow money, and, and not compared to men. And they also, and this, this is, sounds maybe a little bit controversial, there is more risk aversion or a... Um, lack of self-confidence for borrowing money 
early in the cycle of a business. So, and the, the Kaufman Institute is who has done a lot of research on this. And if you're interested in looking at her work, her name is Alicia Bob. And the Kaufman Institute is the Center for Entrepreneurship for the country. And it has a repository of all different kinds of entrepreneurial uh, data, uh, research, and, and resources. And Alicia is one of the premier researchers of, of women entrepreneurship. So if, in fact, that is true, and our experience over 14 years shows us that, you know, just anecdotally that that's true, then what can we do about it? So we put, I mean, instead of doing everything ourselves, because none of us have the answers, we, we asked a variety of women's business organizations, women's leaders in Atlanta, women leaders in Atlanta, and also um, some of our current clients or customers to sit down with us and, and advise us about how a program that's tailored to women should look. And we discovered that number one, well, nobody should recreate the wheel. That if a particular organization already was doing something like having seminars on marketing, well, we shouldn't do seminars on marketing. We should refer people or create some kind of an affiliation with the organization that's teaching about marketing. And we should stick to our core competence which is around understanding money and financial issues, uh, particularly things like cash flow, because um, frequently um, all people, not just women, but will look, look at their checkbook and see they've got $300 or $3,000 in there and think, oh, I've got money, I've got, I've got cash, my business is doing well, when in fact, um, that's just what's in the checkbook. They could literally owe more money than what's, what's in the checking account. But there's a tendency not to look at your financial statements and sometimes when you're small, really small, micro businesses, you may not even create financial statements. So that's, that's one of our core competences. So we're focusing on that uh, with the, the WISE initiative. The other thing that's addressing the, the confidence issue is women, all of us, but, but women in particular, gain a lot of strength and self-confidence from telling their stories and sharing their stories and sharing their journeys with each other. So we're having networking groups but they are different from some of the other networking groups. For example, we, we are limiting those groups to 40 women or less. Because if you have 40 women or less, you've got the opportunity to really, each person talk to the other person there. And we've also been asking uh, high, high impact or very successful women entrepreneurs if they will come and do like a 15 minute talk at these networking events. And the last one we had was uh, Susan Nethero, who owns a company, she owned the company, she just sold it, um, it's, called, it's called Intimacy. And she was on uh, Oprah and, and Today Show and very high profile. And she was glad to come do it. So she came and, and spoke and with a small number really got, got a chance to speak with each, each one and also each woman actually got their picture made. Um, you know, that w we hadn't planned that. That was kind of um, extemporaneous. But, but, it, but people felt wonderful about it. And we're going to continue to do those kinds of events try to figure out some ways that are measurable to measure um, 
what the what the impact is. Are we impacting something that seems as hard to measure as confidence? It I'm I'm wondering if we will end up trying to um, relate it to amount borrowed or jobs created or something like that. But it, it's going to be interesting for us and hopefully for some of our interns. I thought what I'd do is tell you about two, two of our clients and then we could um, do some questions. Um, this is Aisha Cooper. And Aisha owns a business in Snailville. It's called Sarah Care. Her grandfather has Alzheimer's or had Alzheimer's and lived with the family and they, they took care of him. And she just got to see the immense joy but also challenges and struggles um, of taking care of someone who needed uh, such as intensive personal assistance and, and monitoring. And she had a great deal of love for him also. So she left her public relations job and started an adult daycare. And Sarah Care is actually a franchise. Mm -hmm. So she, she bought the franchise and began her daycare business, adult daycare business. And lo and behold, she was nine months into it. And guess what? Uh, she was running out of capital. So she connected with us and wanted a loan. And our loan officer worked with her because she had a few blemishes on her credit. Uh, but we worked our ways through that and we made a $35,000 loan to her. Now see how that's a little bit different than what you think of as a micro loan in another country? So technically, Aisha has a $35,000 or had a $35,000 loan from us. Um, she since is doing, her business has done well, and we have lent her $35,000 and $15,000 over and over again for the last four years. And when she speaks about us, she always talks about, um, the money was absolutely ne necessary and she would have had to close her doors if we hadn't stepped up with the money. But also, it isn't just the money. Um, it was hope, encouragement, and a relationship. So a microfinance organization can create relationships where they're providing the kinds of supports that these small businesses need. And that's, that's what ACE strives to do. This next one is Diana Howell, and Diana Howell lives in Blairsville, and Blairsville is at the border of North Georgia and North Carolina, North, and, North Carolina. and what she does is paints houses. She's, she's in a very rural area, and she has five children. And when we met her, she came to us for a loan of about $2,000 for a pressure washer. Because when you're painting the outside of, of houses, you need to, to wash the, the house off first. And she was referred from a, um, a domestic abuse center. And she has, like I said, she's got five children or had five children and they were small at the time because this was about 11 years ago and lived in not a mobile home but actually a trailer with these five children. Since this time, we've lent her many, 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 we have many, many loans with her. Um, most of those loans are very small, uh, 5,000, 7,000, 2,000. And now she has, still has the painting company and she hires part-time workers. And Diana may, um, may not have the kind of business where she makes lots and lots of money. She, um, but what she does have is a different kind of success. Of her five children, three of them are either in college or 
getting a technical college degree in welding. In fact, I think one, one already did get that degree in welding. So what you're seeing with someone like Diana um, is the ability to be self-employed can help break that poverty cycle to where your children are going to do better um, th than you did. And that's what many parents want for their children anyway. So I, f I feel good about that, but helping Diana and people like Diana. So micro is different in the United States. And I've just given you some examples. Um, we have constantly about 200 clients that we're working with. When they pay off the loan, some continue to come to some of our networking groups, and, and some of them do not. Uh, it's different here, and I think you can see that because of the amounts of money, but the impact certainly is, is great. And I am hoping that you all will be interested in getting involved in microfinance, whether it's here at home or now with crowdfunding and those kinds of things. I mean, you can get involved anywhere in the country uh, right from your college campus.